All right, let's dig into the demo. So um, many of you are familiar with the Tiller Money Labs, or sorry, the, the, the foundation template in, uh, that comes with Tiller Money um, uh, feeds. And today we're gonna talk about a new savings budget that allows you to add on or, or accrue balances within categories. So word of warning here, this budget is very new. It's, we've, we've released it about a month ago. We've gotten a lot of feedback in the, the community. It's gotten better every day. But if, if this isn't really the best choice, if your budget is mission critical, that said, it, it is working for, uh, for many users right now. Um, and if you're open to some experimentation and willing to try something new, we encourage you to do that. And we'll, we'll show you how in this, in this video. The benefits of this budget are that it builds on top of the foundation template. It tracks and accrues unspent funds within a category. So if you underspend in one month, that, that money will be available in the, the following month. It allows you to track, to set and track savings goals. You can modify budgets directly in the dashboard, kind of like the envelope budget that some of you may be familiar with. Um, and also we create a budget history that you can review. If you are in our envelope budget um, that's, that's supported with the Tiller add-on, some of the things you'll see that are better with this new budget are improved performance. It uses way fewer scripts. Most of the work is done in cell uh, with in cell formulas. It's more compatible with uh, the Tiller uh, foundation template and also with a lot of our tooling in Tiller Money Labs. You can enable rollovers or, or sort of tracked categories selectively rather than having that apply to all of the categories in your spreadsheet. And also we create a change history. The things that are different from the, the old budget are that we only allow monthly budgets um, with the new tool. We don't do weekly by weekly budgets. Budget periods must start on the first of the month. We only allow one budget per spreadsheet. The rollover two concept, if you're familiar with that, is not available in the new budget. And also we use a sidebar uh, script to, to perform the updates or the adjustments that you might be familiar with rather than just doing those as soon as you hit return. So uh, let's jump into the demo. I'm going to just move some things around here real quick. Hopefully you can still see. Heather, can you see my screen okay? Sure can. Okay, awesome. Uh, so what you're seeing here is, uh, or our starting point for this demo is a configured foundation template. Heather does a bi-weekly demo of how to get started with Tiller and goes through installing the foundation template, setting up your budgets um, for the monthly budget. Um, so this should be a familiar starting point for users. If, you ha if you're not familiar about with how to get to this point, um, I recommend uh, Heather's webinar. It's excellent. Um, so what you see here, again, foundation template, we've got about three months of categorized transactions here uh, going back into June. And um, the category sheet has budgets set up. Um, you can see periods up top and you can see budgets um, for all these categories. And so at this point, we're ready to uh, go ahead and install the new, the new budget on top of the spreadsheet. So I'm going to go to Tiller Money Labs and hit launch. And... Um, here we're gonna add a solution. If you haven't done that before, the Tiller Money Labs add-on lists a lot of templates that um, are free to use and install. Um, and uh, we're going to select the new savings budget prototype. One thing you might notice is that down here, there's a little warning. The warning's telling you that, this, that to use this savings budget prototype template, the budget journal sheet is also required and this this, this uh, installer will take care of installing that, that sheet as well for you. And if we watch over here, we've, we can see the budget journal has already been installed. Um, and in a second here, we'll see the savings budget pop in. Um, Just one note uh, for folks who haven't installed Tiller Money Labs yet, you can easily get it by going to get add-ons. You wanna show them that really quick while that's installing under add-ons get add-ons, and then you just search for Tiller Money Labs, and that's the way you can install it. Thanks, Heather. Um, so here we can see the savings budget has been installed. There's a message basically saying that the missing sheet has also been installed. And what you see here should look pretty familiar if you're using the monthly budget. You'll see uh, the familiar budget, actuals, available, uh, a display period selection. Let me get this out of the way. This, this uh, controller is kind of distracting me. Um, uh, again, that should look a lot like this, this budget. We don't have all these widgets up top, but these pieces are the same. You'll also notice that down here, we have a new sheet called the budget journal. Um, and this is basically a change log for all the changes you make to budget and savings amounts in your budget. So it's kind of like a, 
a, a reference um, if you want to go back and see what you changed. If you want, if you don't want to look at this, there's no issue with hiding it, but I highly recommend not deleting it because um, it is an important tracking tool for some of the changes you may make in this budget. Um, so uh, be careful with that. Another thing you might notice that has changed is when you install this budget, you'll see a new category or a new column and added to your category sheet called track. Um, and what this track column does is allows you to identify categories where you want to um, you want to track the, the the rollover balance period to period. Sorry, I'm just trying to find where I am in my my notes here. Um, yeah, okay. Um, and this this track. Uh, this track column has a drop down. You can set something to savings, track savings. There's also a debt uh, selection. That's basically for, for some future work we hope to do. Um, so right now that's not supported. I do not recommend using that. And we're gonna go and set all of our expense and income categories to track. So we're gonna track those balances month to month. Um, we're not gonna do that for our transfer types. And uh, one other thing I want to do here is I want to add this. This new budget allows us to create longer term savings goals. So I want to add uh, two things I want to save for. The first thing I'm going to save for um, is many users want a rainy day fund. Um, and we're going, we can, with a, as with any um, tiller uh, category sheet, you can basically create a group to sort of help organize your categories. We're going to call this long term goals. Uh, this will be an expense category, um, and we're also going to set savings for this. And we're going to set one other uh, goal. We want to buy a brand new Apple Watch 6. Um, and we're just going to copy over those settings. For a category to show in your savings budget, it needs to have a non-blank value for the period. We're going to set the value for these to zero for the moment, and I'll show you how to change that in a second. And also one other change we're gonna make is most of your foundation budgets will start with uh, start in January. Because we have no, um, no data for uh, January through May, we're gonna change our start date to June in our budget. And you'll see all these budgets will cascade forward um, you know, using this, this formula here. All right, so I think we're pretty much configured and ready to go into our savings budget. So let's look at what that looks like now. So at this point, um, we're going to set this back to our first budget month. And what you see now are the budgets that are coming out of the category sheet, just like they did. They're referencing the same data as your monthly budget may, may be already in your foundation template. You're also going to notice that your savings for all of these um, different categories is zero because this is the first period. Nothing is accrued because it's the first month. Um, you can see actuals being pulled in for the selected period. Um, and then available obviously being calculated based on what's what's left after you've spent your actuals. Um, one thing that you can do that's pretty cool in this budget is when you see a category is is going over, um, like this grocery category, you can see I spent about $100 more than uh, I had planned on. Um, I can actually take budget from somewhere else and move it into that category for the period. So here I'm noticing that this household budget is under. There are no actuals for this period. I had $100 budgeted. So let's take $100 out of this category and let's move it into this category. What you'll see here is like an immediate preview of what that change will look like when these adjustments are, are sort of written to your budget. Um, so already you can see this has gone to zero, this has gone to zero. You can see the new, um, the new budgets reflected here. But to formalize this and write it into my budget, once I'm satisfied with the changes, I need to go to the tools menu in Tiller Money Labs and I will see a new savings budget workflow if the savings budget is installed. So I'm going to click on that and I can click update budget and these changes will be written into this these columns. So you can see now the adjust column, the adjustments have been wiped and they've been written here. If I look back, the re the sort of record of this data is here. Um, this is where the change was made formally, and you can see here this 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 uh, groceries in June, which was 750 for most months, got bumped by 100, and you can see household, which was 100 for most months, dropped to zero. That data is now sort of permanently part of my budget. 
you'll also notice down at the bottom is these, these other categories that we added for long-term goals. And basically you fund savings goals by creating a budget for them. If you spend the budget, you get, you get less of it. But if you don't spend budget in a category, month after month, that budget will accrue and keep rolling over into the subsequent months in this savings column. Right now, these aren't really funded. We have a zero budget. And when I look at this budget, I can see that I have, um, I'm making quite a bit more than I'm spending. So if I want to, uh, if I want to leverage the, you know, nearly four hundred dollars that I'm not that I'm not currently including in my expense budget, I can basically apply that against the savings goal. So let's change our budget to include hundred dollars a month of budget right here going towards the Apple Watch fund, and let's take the rest, which I think is two hundred ninety-two dollars, and apply that to a rainy day fund. Um, and now you can see both of all of my income is budgeted at this point. I'm going to want to write this uh, to my budget here. Um, takes just a second. And now those values are here. Also, this is, a, this is an opportunity to peek at our budget journal. And you can see here all the changes that I've made just now are logged in here. Here's the period. Here's what category changed. Here's how much it changed before and after values. Um, and then also timestamps so it can see when I made those changes. So the last thing I'm going to call out because we're going to jump ahead in a second here is um, is that our auto and gas uh, is is very favorable. We're, we budget 125 and we're only using a small amount of that. And the reason for that is that we're going to ha we're going to be saving up for an insurance payment that's going to happen in September. So let's look at how rollovers work now or or savings um, savings kind of accruals. If you look at a budget category at the end of the month. When we go to the next month, this value that's available that was not spent or was overspent will move into the savings column. So let's just like keep our eye on a couple values here. Like for example, here we've got 108.15 here, 2306. When I jump to the next month, July, you'll see those values will move right over here. Um, and now they're part of they're part of what's available in the subsequent month. For um, for auto and gas in July, not only do I have the $125 from my July budget. But I have the 10815 I have that accrued over all previous periods. So there's basically, you know, $230 here to spend with only $74 of actuals. Um, so let's now jump all the way, kind of getting close to the end here. This won't go on forever. Um, but we're gonna jump all the way to September here, and we're gonna look at two things. The first is that um, Actually, sorry, let me go to August real quick and just show you. You can see that this uh, auto and gas column continues to build up. We keep on getting a large available because we keep on having large budget, small expense. If we get all the way to September, you'll see that it actually drops way down. Why did that happen? Let's go back and look at our tran transaction sheet. What you see is um, we made this payment in July that was expensive, uh, more than just the cost of gas for our insurance. Um, and so essentially this, this savings budget process of building up um, and, and planning for something over a long term, and then when that allowed us to basically cover an, a large expense that hit on a, on a non-monthly period, if that makes sense. The other thing I wanna show you is that in this month, um, we had two new uh, big expenses. The first thing is uh, we, the Apple Watch came out and we bought it. So let's put in our Apple Watch here and categorize this transaction. And also the Tesla caught on fire and we had to um, do a repair. And that's a good use of our rainy day fund. Um, so now when I have categorized those two items here, you can see we're still doing well on our rainy day fund because we're saving so much and now we're four months into our budget. But the Apple Watch, we didn't save enough. It came out, we bought it faster than we even expected. So one other cool thing about this budget is when you, when you need to cover something, you can get it from somewhere else from the savings column as well. So there's this drop down here. Um, right now, I showed you how to use this when it was when we were making adjustments to the budget column here, but you can also make adjustments to the savings column. So this isn't probably good practice to pay for your Apple Watch out of your rainy day fund, but we have money here that can fix this problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 49.50 out of our out of our Apple, our rainy day fund, you'll see it drop right here. Um, and we're going to put that into here. And you can see we're doing this in kind of a budget and cash flow neutral way. So it's responsible, uh, other than the fact that we're tapping rainy day for, for 
uh, emotional purchases. Um, so now, uh, now when I have this set to savings and I click update budget, what you're gonna see is that basically these changes are written to this column and not to the budget. So here we go, we click here. And um, you can see here the savings increased. You can see that this is gone. You can see that this trued up. And then the other thing I want to point out to you real quick is that these changes are also written here. They're savings changes, not budget changes. And the other thing that's important to note is while the category sheet is kind of your master log of your changes to your budgets, this sheet is your master log of your changes to your savings, like these, these kind of modifications, these adjustments to your savings. So that's why the sheet can't get deleted is because when we pull in, what should that budget be? This is where we find out all the past changes you've made. Um, so I think we're really close to the end here and ready for questions. The only thing, there are a couple quick uh, things I want to note for you. The first is a cool feature in here is that we allow you to sort within groups by category name. You can see it's alphabetical, but you can also sort by budget and kind of have the biggest budgets at the top. You can also sort by savings and kind of see where you have the largest uh, savings, if that helps you. Um, Another thing is that this budget can run concurrently with monthly and yearly budgets. Uh, um, this is back in January, but if we put this into September, um, this is this this can these two can run concurrently. But it's very important to know if you tr decide to try the savings budget that when you make changes to the savings budget and the changes are written into your category sheet, those changes will affect both budgets. So don't don't. Don't experiment with this. Think that you can do it without making any modifications to your monthly budget and then kind of find out too late that basically your your monthly budget has been changed um, through the testing process of this new budget. Savings changes, like I showed at the end here with this setting, um, those are separate from the monthly budget and those can be made without any changes. And the only other two things I want to tell you real quick are if we... Um, if we refresh now that this has been installed and we if we let the add-on reload, I want to show you that you can make changes in these budgets um, without going all the way into the sidebar. Uh, we have kind of a shortcut for that. So if I wanted to let's just say put um, uh, on the budget, move $5 into here and have it come from here, and I didn't want to open up the add-on all the way, I can go in here and when this budget is installed, there's this new update savings budget. It's just the same workflow, um, but it's just uh, easier to access as you saw with the sidebar. And the last thing I want to say is we do have a lot of documentation in here, and this is supported in the community. Um, and there's a migration. If you're in the envelope budget, we have, it's a little bit of a manual process, but we do have a migration workflow that you can try to, um, or you can use to basically get your data moved over um, to test this new sheet. All right, that is, uh, that's all I have. Um, awesome, thanks Randy. I always love that you add some jokes in there when you were talking about the Tesla catching on fire. I was cracking up over here. I don't know if you noticed that, but I was just laughing so hard. Um, so we do have a few questions. Uh, Cody asks, is there a way to not overwrite at each version update? I'm not totally sure I understand that question, Cody. So if you don't mind clarifying, I, I could interpret it a few ways. Um, so I would love some clarification there. He also asked, is there a way to not modify the set budget amount for each successive month? And I'm guessing that's probably in the category sheet. Um, yeah, I think two things, Cody. I'm guessing when you said to not overwrite with sub successive sheet changes, I think one thing to note here is that there's really no data stored in the sheet. Um, and so if we do make an improvement to it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate at all to just overwrite the sheet. All the data is stored in your transaction sheet, your category sheet, and your budget journal once you start making additions there. Um, so overwriting this won't, won't take anything out because this is all just basically pulling in data from other sources. As far as, um, I think to your other question, one thing I was noticing when I was um, preparing for the demo is that most Tiller spreadsheets are set up um, to when you add a category, if you put a number in, it, it basically goes all the way out to the right. I, yeah, so there it is. So you can see because it basically there's this cell that kind of keeps referencing the cell before it. One thing that's a little wonky here is that if you use, if, if your sheet is set up in that way and you, and you go and change a budget value, let's just say at the beginning, and these subsequent cells are set up with an equals formula, 
um, let's just say the, the sheet, uh, we, we use this, the sidebar workflow to put $400 in here. It actually changes all subsequent budgets. And so the solution to this problem is if you set a value to um, just select everything here and do paste as values. And that will basically mean that when you change like this number in the middle, it won't cascade down all the way to the right. Thanks, Randy. All right, Charlotte says, ah, my biggest question was on how to get the debt accounts to work right, but sounds like that's not ready to use yet. I'm, I'm guessing like the debt option in the track column in categories. Um, yeah, yeah, we're working on some updates to some debt tools. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite ready to share yet, um, but we felt that um, since we're inserting this column, rather than inserting a column that didn't have all the fields we plan to use, um, and then trying to find a way to update that column later, we thought it was better just to um, add the column with some fields that weren't really ready to share yet. And so I realize it's a little bit confusing, but hopefully we'll have more to share soon. Yeah, hopefully real soon. All right. Okay, so next Cody asks, can you confirm that if you track savings as an expense, the savings budget sheet won't work correctly? Any alternatives to keep as an expense? Do you understand that one? Uh, if you track savings, I, I mean, I'm not quite sure. I mean, we demonstrated tracking these savings categories as, as expenses. Um, and I mean, they're definitely not income, right? We're not budgeting for income. We're basically budgeting mm -hmm. for ultimately what will be expenses. And in this case, they are savings because we're basically budgeting for something and saving money for something and sort of assigning it to that bucket and then we're not using it because um, you know we're, we're waiting to make the purchase. Um, so I hope that that makes sense conceptually. I'm not quite sure I, I totally understand um, the question. Yeah, let us know, Cody, if not, and um, maybe just share some clarifying info and we can take another stab at it. All right, so it, let's see. Charlotte also asked, can we get some round times two formulas in the sheet to fix the float point errors. I use accounting format on my sheets to see zeros as lines and these errors cause very small numbers like 0 0.00000032 to show as 0, 0.00. Thanks. Um, I, Charlotte, we can definitely do that. That's easy. Um, we can put that in the master. Um, one thing that would be really helpful is either in the Q&A or as a DM to me, if you could just tell me which field specifically. I'm assuming um, that you're talking about these columns right here, but if you're talking about something else, um, just let me know. Yeah, feel free to post in the community too, Charlotte, on the specifics there. Happy to make some refinements. All right. Teresa says, realizing this is style beta, will there be functionality added for highlighting for negative available balances within categories plus minus budget allocation each month. I think uh, maybe she's saying like, what's if there's a negative available, um, so like in the available column in the foundation template right now, it shows that as a red kind of like, hey, it's, you know, you're over here. I think that's a great recommendation. And yeah, I think it's probably more just we're in the early phases of the development and it is when we start cleaning up the UX, I think that would be a great thing to add. As far as um, the plus minus budget allocation each month, um, are you, uh, Teresa, are you, are you indicating like if it's netting to zero or Randy, did you have maybe another interpretation of that? Uh, I, I don't, um, on the plus minus budget allocation, maybe, maybe that's like this number here, like how these show plus minus. I mean, these are, these are set up, these adjustments are set up as net values. If you were using the envelope budget, there was a little bit more you could do there in terms of saying um, plus, pre prefixing with a plus minus or equals. Um, right now, I would love to implement that, but I'm afraid that there are some things that happen when you en enter those values here well, yeah, I, I, we can't commit to that because I'm, I'm not sure we can, we can do that. But for right now, everything is uh, a sort of a net adjustment. Got it. All right. Steve asks, can you add a column that sums the savings and budget columns to get total value of available spend for each category? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, effectively that's happening for you. Um, we're not 
we, we aren't we aren't showing that. Um, but yeah, that that you know, if you look at, for example, like this one here, we've got twelve hundred and sixteen here. We're subtracting, you know, five hundred, so it's it's around seven hundred left. Like so, it's it's that math is happening in and how we get to here. Um, you're just not seeing it. Like I'm I haven't tried this yet. We can try it. Let me just do it real quick. Um, but like if I add a column here. I don't think things will break, and I think I could just, you know, do like, a, um, you know, you might want to add. You can you can see some other formulas that uh, that ignore blanks. Um, you could probably do something like this. I think. Uh, why did that not go? I'm not gonna do this. I won't. I'll try not to get stuck on this, but. Uh, I should, uh, all right, well, I apologize that I uh, can't make this work, but I think you, you could basically, at the very least, you could make your own column here and just say this plus this and kind of drag this this format down um, and you could get it to ignore blanks if there are blanks. There's, there's things you could do here, but you could basically create that yourself. Um, the only thing to be aware of is that if you did go and add a, uh, uh, or, or update your budget using the sidebar workflow. If we made a change, um, you'd have to recreate that that uh, addition. Yeah, like if you restored it, it would overwrite. Um, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And then Steve also asked, can you have negative values for each category? I'm assuming he means negative savings. Well, it, it will carry forward negative. Yeah, that's savings, happening right, right? here. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you if you go over, I mean, you'll see that basically whatever happened right now, this is in September. If we go back to August, whatever happened here created seventy three dollars of negativity here. So we started with a negative balance. We overspent. We had a hundred dollars of budget that leaves about forty dollars available, but we spent one hundred and five. You can see we end up with a negative balance that carries forward as negative balance. Got it. Okay, Steve, let me know if you meant something else. All right. So Cody's follow up here to remove money from available. I track transfer from my checking account to my savings account as an expense rather than a transfer. Thus it views the transfer as reduction to the savings goal rather than an increase. Um, does that make sense? No. <laughs> I think so. Sorry. No, I think Sorry, it Sorry, Cody, make we're, sense. Not, I think we're not following it. You really I, sound I, I think Cody's at, I think Cody's changing the accounts, um, moving the money to another account. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we have, um, we, we, we need to work on this documentation. This is part of what makes it beta. But um, I think we have, uh, we owe you, Cody, probably a, a, some information in here on savings workflows, so effectively what are best practices for making those, for moving those uh, savings. Yeah, and I think a lot of that's in the docs for the stuff that we haven't released yet, actually. But it's probably helpful to put it in here, too. Um, so it looks like that was all the questions that we had. Um, and Cody, if we didn't, or it looks like one more just came in. If, we, if, if you have more questions, it may be better to just post those in the community and we can kind of dig in further there with more details. So the short nature of the messages, I think, makes it challenging for us to really get out. Um, what you're trying to express there. The last question here, Teresa says, envelope budget has total rollover savings at the top that I use at the beginning of each month to match my account balances and make sure everything is in order. Might I be able to do something similar in the future with the savings budget? Yeah, I think our intent is to build out the top of this with the different informational widgets and useful pieces of information like that you know, zero budgeting allocation, like have I allocated all the money I'm planning to earn to money I'm planning to spend to get, you know, for the zero sum style budgeting. We just haven't built in the widgets yet. And we're still, since it's still in beta, we're trying to decide like which ones are most useful, you know, and if we, if we borrow from the foundation template or if we ever in the future, you know, adopted this type of budgeting as part of the foundation template, you know, we're, we're keeping all those things in mind about like which of these informational bits and pieces are important to people. So definitely provide feedback about that on the community as well. Like which of these from foundation are helpful, which are helpful from the envelope budget. And we can consider all that as we start building out those features too. Anything to add there, Randy? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think that, um, just like kind of big picture in terms of what does it mean that this is kind of in beta? 
I think in terms of features, other than the area that Heather talked about, kind of this top widget area, I think that probably most of the features that we hope for are there. We hope to make it not so so like feature rich that it's slow and hard to learn and complex. We want to keep it relatively simple, and I think that's how it is right now. Um, we do hope to build out the top kind of widget area um, once we've got a little more miles. And the biggest thing right now is just that um, because it's only about a month old and we have kind of our own limited data sets to test, we don't have all the crazy, um, you know, things that the, you and the community are doing, we don't know if the numbers will always add up right in like every scenario. And so, so we're basically just giving it a little time to gestate and get feedback and, and make fixes. Um, so yeah, so I think it's in terms of it being beta, it's just that we, we trust it like 95%, not 100%, and, um, and there's just a little bit of UX stuff that we'd like to clean up. And your, your feedback's really valuable for that. Yeah, we've iterated already a bunch just from community members sharing feedback and testing. So definitely um, let us know if you test it out and find anything you, you like or don't like or confusing or broken. <laughs> it's really helpful to us. So. All right, looks like that's all our questions. So I think we'll wrap here. Thanks so much everyone for joining us this afternoon. Thanks for running that demo, Randy, that was great. Thanks everyone. We appreciate your interest and your time very much. See y'all. See ya.